Lucifer alongside Michael and Gabriel? It would appear that as it is in heaven, so it is on earth. <laughs> and if you go to Mozambique, you can also begin to see that there is a problem there, but there is an attempt at hygiene. You go to Zambia, that is another country, Kenneth David Kaunda. On the day that he left office, Kenneth David Kaunda had only $8,000 in his account. If you ask your typical African Tanzanian counselor today, before Magufuli came in, that was pocket change. <laughs> After 24 years in power, $8,000 only, those are people who love their country and sacrifice. There is a need for hygiene in Zambia. It is the only country in the world that I know where when an opposition leader blocks a motorcade, it does not become the offense of obstruction, it becomes the offense of treason. Unprecedented in the world. Hygiene is necessary in that country. And I look forward to hygiene being introduced. Then, one comes to Tanzania. You know, Tanzania, when one talks about hygiene, one must start in the 1960s. One must remember the Arusha Declaration and the nobility of the intentions of Mwalimu Julius Kambaragi Nyerere. And that is why Many of you may not know, but at one time it was suggested that he be made a saint of the Catholic Church. And the reason was very simple. This was a man who had ideas. This was a man who had clarity of thought. This was a man who could see the future almost with the exactitude of a Jewish prophet. This was a man who had the humility, almost like the humility of the carpenter of Nazareth. This was a man who loved his country. He made mistakes, and when he made them, he realized and corrected them. That is his greatness. Is it not Saint Just who said that nobody can rule guiltlessly? This is a man who found 120 plus ethnic groups and welded them into one niche so that Tanzanians speak with one voice. You know, if you look at Tanzania and you ask your typical Tanzanian what was the ethnic extraction of President Kambarage Nyerere, they do not know and they do not care. If you ask Tanzanians what was the ethnic extraction of the second president of Tanzania, Mze Ali Hassan Mwinyi, the Tanzanians do not know and they do not care because it does not matter. If you ask them what was the ethnic extraction of the third president of Tanzania, Benjamin William Mkapa, they do not know, and it does not matter, and they do not care. And if you ask Tanzania what was the ethnic extraction of your fourth president, Jakaya Mrisho Kikwete, they do not know, and they do not care. And if you ask them what is the extraction of your fifth president, John Pombe Magufuli, they do not know, and they do not care. They only know that he's a bulldozer. But you go to my country, Kenya, God save my country. <laughs> God save my country. When you meet your typical Kenyan and you introduce yourself as John, they'll ask for the second name, not that mean they may know your full names, but that they may identify you with your ethnicity and pigeonhole you accordingly. And when you go into that country, which is a great country in prospect, but which is being destroyed by negative ethnicity, you ask them who the first president of Kenya was, they'll tell you it was Jomo Kenyatta and he was Kikuyu and we care, we want our Kikuyu president. 
And if you ask them who was the second president, they'll tell you it was Daniel Arab Moy of the Kalenjin extraction, and we cared because it was our turn to eat. And if you ask them who was the third president, they'll tell you it is Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta and he is a Kikuyu and we want him to continue because we Kikuyus and we Kalenjin only feel safe when one of our own is in state house. And if you ask the opposition and you ask the leaders, you ask the leaders from my own ethnic group, the Luo of Kenya, the law will tell you we have been marginalized for too long. The time has come that God must smile upon us and our son must be the president. And if you ask the Luhia, they'll say the same thing. That is the tragedy of gigantic proportions. I'm submitting to us that the country called Kenya needs political hygiene. I'm submitting to us that the country called Kenya needs to come to Tanzania here on a benchmarking tour and that the president of the Republic of Kenya and all our parliamentarians should sit at the state house and be lectured by John Pompe Magufuli on the finer points of governance. Of course, Mze Warioba will be there and other stalwarts will be there. Salim Ahmed Salim will be there. Great Tanzanians will be there, and Nyerere will remind us Katika Karne, Yaishrini Namoja, Tupande, Basi, Yamakabila, Ujinga, na Upumbafu. Because it can destroy a nation. There is need for political hygiene in Kenya. Right now in Nigeria, the Igbos want to secede. And they are being warned by the Yorubas and the Northerners. There is need for political hygiene. But let me also say one of the things that relates to hygiene. Aside from negative ethnicity, there is another thing that has killed Africa and taken away political hygiene, corruption. You know... It would appear that we of the Negroid blood relate very poorly with this thing called money. Money is a useful facility that enables you to do things with ease. But if you allow money to control you and you begin to adore money and you acquire appetite for money, then you are in trouble. And I want to submit to us that Africa is the only continent in the world where upon appointment into political office or upon ascending to the political office is as if you have won a lottery ticket to sudden wealth. In Africa, when you are appointed a minister, even the newspapers will say if you are appointed to the Ministry of Finance, he has been appointed to the lucrative Ministry of Finance. If you are appointed to the Ministry of Agriculture or Mining, they say you've been appointed to the lucrative Ministry of Mining. But when you are appointed to the Minister of Culture, they say you've been appointed to the lean Ministry of Culture. In other words, there is a sense in which institutions in Africa appear to believe that he who gets into public office has a license to be a thief. And if you look at many African countries, many African leaders cannot account for, for their wealth. They have stripped their countries naked. You know, when I look at some of the great leaders of Africa, some who will not be remembered so very fondly by history, I regret. Robert, Gabriel Mugabe of Zimbabwe. Nyinyi wa Swahili mnasema wali wa kushiba uonekana kwenye sinia. In 1980s when Mugabe took power, it was said of him that he had the largest number of degrees 
of any leader in the world and he had degrees. It was said that he was a passionate revolutionary and he was a passionate revolutionary. It was said that he had liberated Rhodesia, renamed Zimbabwe into a great country and for the first 10 years he did a good job. Then something happened. Different commentators have different ways of saying. Some of them say that Sally died and he married Grace and it has never been the same again. I do not know. Some of them say that he became a prisoner of some of his comrades. I do not know. But the only thing that I know is that all the historical dividends he had accumulated have now been squandered. Why? They have been squandered because Robert Gabriel Mugabe now presides over a country where there is 90% unemployment. Robert Gabriel Mugabe now presides over a country which does not have a currency but has a central bank. This is unprecedented in the history of modern civilization. I'm submitting to us that corruption has been at the very heart of the destruction of Africa. That is why we do not have roads. That is why we do not have good hostels. That is why we cannot feed ourselves in Kenya today. We and Ethiopia, we are importing maize from Mexico. In Liberia, they are importing chicken from Brazil. And in many countries, we cannot even feed ourselves. We do not make our own medicine. Medicine is made as generics in India. We do not even produce our own seeds to plant our fields. They are being made by Syngenta and Monsanto. We do not produce anything because of corruption. But there is a sense in which one can begin to see some hygiene. There is a sense when I arrived here in Dar es Salaam and I look at the newspapers and I see a white gentleman having flown into Tanzania in a private jet from the company called Acacia goes into state house in Dar es Salaam and literally almost saying mia kalpa mia kalpa mia maxima kalpa nimekosa sana nimekosa sana nimekosa sana and president john pombe magufuli as if he was a catholic father saying Nimekusikia mwanangu. Nimekusikia mwanangu. Tutakuhurumia lakini kwa masharti. Na masharti ni ya kwamba lazima ulipe ulizo zipora. I felt told that there is an African leader who can stand up to international pirates who for 20 years have deprived Tanzania of taxes that would have gone to schools, taxes that would have gone to the health sector, taxes that would have gone to infrastructure, taxes that would have gone into agriculture. John Pombe Magufuli is a breath of fresh air. I know that there are some Tanzanians who may think that he's disrupting their agenda. John Pombe Magufuli disrupt their agenda. For if you come into a country and you find a country, a patient suffering from cancer, you've got to subject them to chemotherapy. And when you administer chemotherapy, the hair will fall out a little. There will be some pain. That pain is necessary because there is no gain without pain. I'm not a Jewish prophet nor related to one. I'm not a member of CCM. But if John Pombe Magufuli continues on this trajectory and has a second term, in the next 10 years, Tanzania will be one of the largest economies in this country. God save John Pombe Magufuli. <laughs> you know, I was reading a tweet and some American is saying, bring us John Pombe Magufuli. 
and I was in Kenya and I said at one time that we need to magulify Kenya. <laughs> in other words, there is a sense in which a new English word can be found, the magufulification of Africa. <laughs> in fact, I dare say that even my own paper, instead of calling it a call for hygiene in African politics, I would say the magufulification of Africa. And I would still be right. But the whites say that one swallow does not make a summer. There are other good examples in Africa of the beginning of the introduction of political hygiene. Ian Kama in Botswana. Ian Kama in Botswana, it is said that a minister in his government went to him and said, I've been named in a scandal, Your Excellency help me. He told him there is nothing that I can do. The individual went to his rural home. The following day, it is reported that he had committed suicide. I'm not a sadist, nor do I intend to be one, but if there are such individuals, I want more suicides. <laughs> Ian Kama is yet another breath of fresh air. Paul Kagame of Rwanda, 1994, the United Nations turned away the Rwandese, within 100 days, anything between 800,000 and 1 million Tutsis and moderate Hutus were killed even in churches. Then there came a tall, lanky man, Paul Kagame, and his comrades in arms. I was there two days ago, and one of the best drives out of any airport in the world is to be found in Kigali in Rwanda and you can see so that those who thought that Africans cannot do it our color is innocent the Negroid the dark color is innocent it is not in our DNA no what happens is that there are some within our ranks who are errant who must be punished one can go on and on, but even my own good friend Yoweri Kaguta Museveni found a dilapidated Uganda. And even if you say that Yoweri has now stayed a little longer, there is a sense in which history will remember him fondly. One can go on and on, but one must also remember that lunch must be served. And if one remembers that lunch must be served, one must also remember that there is the law of diminishing returns. <laughs> and one must also remember that one must now grow to their conclusion, even as they are talking about a call for political hygiene. So I'm submitting to us this morning that Africa can be great and Africa must be great. But Africa will only be great if we Africans do that which is good and right. The great Indian nationalist, Chakravati Raja Gopalachari, <laughs> said that when politics stumbles, the country pays. So the first thing that we must do is to introduce hygiene in our politics. And now that I'm in Tanzania, the first thing that we must do is to magulify our politics. I know that there is a Kiswahili same Gema Kisifiwa Tembo Litiamaji, and I'm conscious that one of the names of President Magufuli is Pombe. But I have no doubt that President Magufuli will remain on the right course. As you say here in Tanzania, Atabaki Kwenjiaku Hata Chepua. I'm suggesting to us that we introduce hygiene in our politics. Which means, and Mzee Wariaba will remember when we were talking about the constitution, Africans must begin looking at their constitution and they must be constitutions which are address the African environment. You know, there was a time after the fall of the Berlin Wall when European powers from London Paris, Madrid, and Washington told us 
that democracy is equals to multi-party politics. Democracy equals to this. I now hold the view that while plurality is a good thing, a constitutional review gives us an opportunity to come up with homegrown solutions. which I think now has created an environment that makes governance very difficult. You, when you make a constitution, make a better constitution than we did. I'm submitting to us that we must now look at our constitution as the primary governance document in order to ensure that we create hygiene in our politics. First of all, there is a sense in which the electorate must also be educated. Democracy presupposes that the electorate is mature and the electorate knows what it wants. You know, three days ago, an individual from my ethnic group called me and he told me this. This time round we are taking it. And I said, who are we? <laughs> and he told me, don't you know? I knew what he was saying, of course. And immediately I told him, never, ever appeal to my ethnic sensibilities. I did not go to school that I vote individuals because they come from my ethnic group. Tell me their agenda on health, their agenda on agriculture, so that if I vote for them, it should just be coincidental that we come from the same ethnic extraction. I'm submitting to us that even you, the electorate, when you are called upon to vote, vote right. I remember in 2007 when I attempted to seek a parliamentary seat and I had a 10-point agenda with Sarah Zangu. The people said, Sisi atutaki Sarah tunataka karo. <laughs> then I told them subsequently, that how is it, and I repeat it again here, you have been given an opportunity to elect, you elect a hyena to take care of goats, and then when the goats have been eaten, you wonder why. <laughs> I'm submitting to us that one of the ways is having a new constitutional dispensation. The other thing that we must do beyond the institution, beyond the constitution, is to have institutions. You know... Mwalimu Julius Kambarage Nyerere, whom you now rightly refer to as Baba Wataifa said, you are not successful until your successor succeeds. <laughs> Today, Mwalimu Kambarage Nyerere is successful because his successors have succeeded. Did you not have Mze Mwinyi? Did you not have Benjamin William Kappa? Did you not have Jakaya Mrisho Kikwete? Did you not have John Pombe Magufuli, who have seen us said, we must protect the sitting presidents. In order to preserve the nation, sometimes memories must be selective. <laughs> I remember after the civil war in Nigeria, the young Yakubu Gowon receiving the Biafrans who had surrendered said, brothers, I'm happy to see you. And the commentator says at a critical point in Nigerian history, the victor did not gloat and the vanquished were not humiliated. What Pombe Magufuli is doing is right. There is no future without forgiveness. There is no future without selective memories, but we must never forget. I'm submitting to us that the only thing that survives and will introduce hygiene in African politics is institutions. Because institutions will exist beyond us. And I'm happy to say that in Tanzania, one begins to see institutions. One begins to see individuals who are smaller than institutions. Because if you are larger than institutions, then you consume institutions. And Mobutu Sese Seko reminded us that 
when he changed his name from Joseph Desire Mobutu to Mobutu Seseseko Kukumbendu Wanzambanga. <laughs> and when he died, until today, the Democratic Republic of Congo is not at ease. Beyond the institution, the other thing that we must do is that we must have men and women of integrity. These men and women of integrity are not angels. They will have made mistakes, but they will have learned from those mistakes. These men and women should be subjected to certain ideals. That is why Mwalimu Nyerere once again said, Lazima tuwe na siyasa ya maadili na miko. There must be taboos in politics, the do's and the don'ts. Tukiwa na sera huria, basi ni uhuni utatamalaki. I'm submitting to us that we must have integrity in order to inject hygiene in Kenyan op in, 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 in African politics. I'm submitting to us the fourth thing that the other thing that we must do is that we must de-ethnicize our politics. And I'm saying it doesn't mean that you reject your being a Sukuma or a Mahaya or a Luo or a Kamba. Celebrate all those. But remember that in order to produce melodious music, you play the white of the piano and the black of the piano, and lo and behold, there is symphony, and there is harmony, and there is joy. <laughs> I'm submitting to us that in order to introduce hygiene in our politics, the quality of the lives of the people must be improved. The gross national happiness index must improve, not the gross domestic product. I'm submitting to us that the misery index must go down. In other words, young Tanzanians and young Africans must have the opportunity to realize their potential. They must not go out to be humiliated. You know, today, and if there is any Chinese in the assembly, forgive me because the Chinese are an amazing people. 30 years ago, China was a third world country. Then they made a decision and China will never be the same again. I want to submit to you, all of you who are in this assembly, 99% of the things that you have are from China. If it is your phone, even if it is iPhone, it is assembled in China. Everything we have is from China. China has become the factory of the world. They know what they want and they are going for it. I'm submitting to us that if we are to produce hygiene in African politics, we must know what we want. Nyerere used to say, Wakati mwingine wa Afrika tunabaki tunashangana kuduat. Eh, wa China hawa. I'm submitting to us that China knows what is wants and Africa must now ask herself, what does she want for her women? What does she want for her young men and women? And I have no doubt that we have the wherewithal to find out what we want. I'm submitting to us that we must also introduce equality and inclusivity. Our women must be given their pride of place. And I must say, you know, somebody said something with which I agreed terribly two days ago. Why must it be that when we are dealing with our women and our youth, we must create for them a microfinance? A mi Why? For how long will our women will be in micro enterprises? Why can't our women be involved in mega enterprises? I'm submitting to us that we must mainstream our women because 52% of the population cannot be left in the periphery. And I'm saying that when you include everybody, when everybody is at the dinner table, then everybody will be happy because the last time I checked, I used to think that there were two ways of being at the dinner table of civilization. And I used to say that at the dinner table of civilization, you can be present as a waiter or a diner. But two days ago, somebody told me, no, that you can also be the food to be eaten. So Africans choose you now. What role you want to play at the dinner table? Do you want to be the food to be eaten? Do you want to be the waiter to be waiting upon the diner? Or you want to be the diner? Africans have been food for too long. 
Africans have been waiters for too long. This is the time to be diners at the dinner table of democracy. I'm submitting to us that we are not children of a lesser God. I'm saying that there is a tide in the affairs of man which taken on a crest leads to great fortunes. But if you miss them, it leads to great miseries. Shakespeare was right. Chinua Achebe was right. If you want and you seek, you will never fail to find Difficulties may and indeed will exist, but it's through overcoming them that we grow stronger. And I'm submitting to us that we have the ability to do that. And to the young Africans, Chinua Achebe posed the question, where are the young suckers that will grow when the old banana dies? Are you those young suckers that will grow when the old bananas who are seated here die? Because the future of Africa is in your hand. Young Chinese are coming here teaching us how to read Mandarin. Are we teaching them Kiswahili? Young Chinese are coming here working seven days a week. Are you working seven days a week? You artists, Kuku Kanvara is on him. But beyond varing Raizoni, the cuckoo must learn and liberate Africa. You young Africans, why are you going to Europe and America? You young Africans, why are you celebrating Manchester United, not younger? <laughs> you young Africans, why don't you have Sunday Manara and Gibson Sembuli recreated rather than Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. You young Africans, why are you celebrating Julio Iglesias? Why are you not celebrating Farida Caroli? Why are you not remembering Baraka Munshey Maruka, solo in his national? I'm submitting to us that in order to have political hygiene, we must also have self-esteem. Kwa kiswahili lazima tujiamini sisi. Self-esteem. Once we have self-esteem that we know that we are equal and that God in his divine wisdom decided the God that I worship is a God of diversity. He looks at a white man and a white woman and he says behold a great creation. And he turns to the Arab, the brown Arab and says, oh, what a good brown creation. And he turns to the slitty-eyed Chinese and the Japanese and he says, behold, what a great creation. And he turns to the Negroid and says, I perfected it here. What a perfect turn. So that when we sit at the dinner table of civilization, it is the diversity that we should look forward to. And I'm submitting to us that once we've done all that, then Africa will be great. Once we have done all that, Africa will be great and Africa can be great. But Africa will not be great on the basis of pronouncements. I know that the Africans sat in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia and came with Africa Agenda 2063. But Africa will not realize Agenda 2063 when 90% of African Union budget is externally financed. He who calls the piper calls the tune. That old English saying is still true. Because as they say in French, in French plus a chance, plus la même chose. The more things change, the more they remain the same in Africa. But I'm submitting to us that this time round, it, they must not remain the same. So, fellow Africans and individuals who may not be Africans but are from other civilizations and our sisters and brothers, make Africa great. This continent can be great. Make Africa's education great. Let Dar Salaam, 
University be great. Let Nairobi be great. Let Fura Bay in Sierra Leone be great. Let our education be great. And we will make it great. Let African agriculture be great. Let us feed ourselves. Let us have food and beef and chicken and grains made in Africa. Let African agriculture be great. Let African infrastructure be great. Let us have the new train moving from Addis Ababa in Ethiopia to Dhaka in Senegal and from Cape Town to Cairo. Let there be great infrastructure. Let us have one passport so that when I arrive at Dar es Salaam, I'm not asked for my passport. Please let us have one. Let us have one currency so that I don't have to fly for one hour and I confront Tanzanian shilling. I fly for 55 minutes, I confront the Rwandese franc, I confront the Angolan Kwanzaa. Let us have a unit of currency which is uniform. You can call it the Afro, whichever name you prefer, but let us have one currency. I'm submitting to us that we can be great. Let us have our women have occupied their pride of place. Let us make the Congo, the Silicon Valley, of Africa, let us make Niger or Burkina Faso the head of nuclear power. Let us make Congo and the Kariba the production headquarters of electricity. Let there be light in Africa. Let there be light in Africa. And I'm submitting to us that that can be achieved if we introduce hygiene in African politics and African affairs. Let us have Africa magulified. God bless you. Naitwa ni pili ni msanii wa rap. Mimi nataka kufanya tu tafakuri kulingana na aliyosema professor. Na nataka ya maswali tu tafakari sisi sio professor. Cha kwanza, je, tulipelekwa ukoloni kwa sababu tulikuwa tuna low self esteem? Tulipelekwa ukoloni kwa sababu tulikuwa hatuna taasisi za imara? Tulipelekwa ukoloni kwa sababu tulikuwa hatuna constitution? Nataka maswali mtafakari. Swali lingine ni kwamba ametoa historia ya viongozi wema na waovu. Je, swali ni swala la tabia ya mtu mwenyewe kuwa mlafi kwamba kina Nyerere walikuwa na tabia nzuri na wakinaidiamia kwa tabia mbovu au ni swala la mfumo linamplace kiongozi ku play role fulani ya ufisadi na mfumo wenyewe wa kifisadi. Swali lingine tumesikia kina uh, Nkuruma waliondolewa kina Sankara kina Lumumba. Kwa nini? Sio kwa sababu walikuwa kwa serikalini wanakataa kula rushwa. Waliondolewa kwa sababu walikuwa wanataka kuvunja mfumo wa kinyonyaji wa uchumi. Tusipoteze hiyo point. Kwa hiyo ukombozi wetu ni kubadilisha kiongozi tusubiri aje kiongozi mwema au ni kubadilisha mfumo wenyewe mzima. Tunasema tutengeneze katiba. Katiba ni mchakato wa kirasimu, ni mchakato wa tabaka gani? Tabaka gani litahozi mazungumzo ya katiba na litawakilisha interest za kina nani? Tunasema tutengeneze taasisi, taasisi katika fikra zipi? Kwa sababu hiyo lugha ya taasisi inaongelewa na wakubwa World Bank wote wanaongea. Au taasisi katika lugha ya mwalimu ya kusema vijiji ndio vyo vitovu vya demokrasia, vitovu vya maendeleo au vitovu vya vitovu vya mamlaka. Je, tatizo ni rushwa? au ni mfumo mzima. Kwa mfano mimi nagombea ubunge. Natafuta hela za kampeni kuwa mbunge. Chama kinagombea urais natafuta hela za kampeni kuwa kuchukua madaraka. Hizo hela wanapata kwa nani? Wanapokuja kupata mamlaka hiyo mikataba waenda kufanya kwa nani? Kwa kumbe huo mfumo wenyewe wa demokrasia ni tool, ni chombo cha kufanikisha huo mfumo mzima wa unyonyaji ufanye kazi. Kwa hiyo profesa ameongea vizuri sana lakini kwangu mimi nasema ukombozi wa Afrika hautaletwa na Mesaya masi. hata ukiwasoma kina mwalimu kina Kabrala kina Sankara waliogopa sana hiyo dhana ya umasi. ambao sisi wote tunayabudu leo tumejaa kwa sababu anakuja profesa Lumumba ni dhana ya umasi. hakuna wakulima hapa wamekuja kutoa mada hao ndo wanaishi umaskini kila siku hakuna wakonda hakuna wapiga debe kuna hiyo hierarchy ya kuhodhi maarifa sisi wasomi ndo tutaongea wale wanyonge tumewaacha. Kwa hiyo kwangu mimi nataka kukazia kwamba mapinduzi pekee ambayo yataikomboa Afrika kwanza ni kuvunja huo mfumo mzima 
wa uchumi na kubadilisha mfumo kama mwalimu alivyotaka kubadilisha mfumo turudishe nguvu kwa wananchi Tukumbuke mapinduzi ya Afrika yalipigwa na wananchi lakini viongozi walipokuja kuyashika na kukaa kwenye mikutano waliwalagai na kuwauza wananchi. Tunatengeneza taasisi, taasisi lakini mwalimu alisema taasisi za kidemokrasia. Kwa sababu zako ni taasisi lakini ni chombo cha cha, cha ubepari. Kwa hiyo kwangu mimi naungana na profesa kwamba tumeona viongozi wachafu lakini mfumo unawa place, unawapa fursa za kuwa wachafu. Kwa ni lazima tuelewe mfumo mzima unafanyaje kazi na tools zake ni zipi. Mimi naogopa sana hizo lugha za taasisi, equality kwa sababu wakoloni ni lugha zao hizo. Katiba na kila kitu. Kwa mimi narudi kwa sababu iliyomfanya Sankara akawawa e, akawawa hani wa South Africa, akawawa lipumba kwa sababu walitaka kubadili mfumo wa kiuchumi. Na ni lazima uanze na dira kubwa kama mwalimu alibalisha elimu alibalisha siasa na kila kitu kutengeneza mfumo mpya kama ambavyo wazungu walivotoka kwenye ukabaila kwenda kwenye ubepari waliua mfumo mzima wa ubepari kwa kama tunataka turudi lazima tuue mfumo mzima wa unyonyaji na tools zake zote tutengeneze mfumo mpya ndio tutaweza kutoka lakini hizi lugha za katiba na hizo ni lugha za rasimu asante sana am um, dr wali okay, you know, former member of the parliament from nigeria and um, i have two questions for you um, when you are making your beautiful uh, presentation, you condemned uh, uh, President Mugabe for staying too long. But you are partial to uh, Museveni and uh, Paul uh, Kagani. Uh, are you trying to tell us that uh, we can allow a little extension of office for our leaders? Or how do we do this? Thank you. Thank you. I am uh, Dr. Camillus Kasala of the Eastern Africa Statistical Training Center. Oh, okay. I have followed Professor Lumumba's presentation. I would like to submit to us that this, what I'm going to say, will be the summary of his presentation.